Would you like free audiobooks? Click the link in the description. Question 1. A patient has been admitted for chemotherapy treatment. What should the nurse prioritize when preparing the patient's room? A. Ensure the room has a pleasant view. B. Verify the availability of additional pillows and blankets. C. Confirm the room is equipped with protective isolation requirements. D. Arrange for daily delivery of newspapers and magazines. Correct answer. C. Rationale. Chemotherapy patients are often immunocompromised due to the myelosuppressive effects of the drugs. Ensuring the room meets protective isolation requirements helps reduce the risk of infection, which is a priority in providing safe care to these patients. Question 2. Which assessment should the nurse perform first for a patient experiencing chest pain? A. Blood pressure measurement. B. Electrocardiogram ECG. C. Auscultation of lung sounds. D. Collection of a family health history. Correct answer. B. Rationale. Immediate assessment with an ECG is crucial for a patient experiencing chest pain to rule out or confirm cardiac ischemia. Timely identification and intervention can significantly improve patient outcomes in cases of cardiac events. Question 3. When teaching a patient about managing hypertension, what dietary advice should the nurse emphasize? A. Increase protein intake. B. Restrict sodium intake. C. Avoid all fats. D. Increase carbohydrate consumption. Correct answer. B. Rationale. Sodium restriction is a key component in managing hypertension. Excessive sodium can lead to increased blood volume and tension against arterial walls, exacerbating high blood pressure. Question 4. A nurse is assessing a patient who reports acute shortness of breath. Which finding would require immediate intervention? A. Oxygen saturation of 92%. B. Respiratory rate of 22 breaths per minute. C. Use of accessory muscles to breathe. D. Slight wheezing heard on expiration. Correct answer. C. Rationale. The use of accessory muscles indicates severe respiratory distress and possibly impending respiratory failure. Immediate intervention is required to support the patient's breathing. Question 5. The nurse is preparing to administer a blood transfusion. Which action is most critical before starting the transfusion? A. Confirm the patient's comfort and positioning. B. Double-check the compatibility of the blood product with another nurse. C. Adjust the room temperature. D. Offer the patient a snack. Correct answer. B. Rationale. Verifying blood product compatibility is crucial to prevent transfusion reactions, which can be life-threatening. This requires a double-check with another nurse as per protocol to ensure patient safety. Question 6. A patient with a history of type 1 diabetes mellitus is scheduled for a fasting blood glucose test and reports feeling dizzy and shaky. What is the nurse's best action? A. Administer insulin as prescribed. B. Offer a glass of water. C. Provide a carbohydrate snack. D. Prepare for an immediate ECG. Correct answer. C. Rationale. Symptoms of dizziness and shakiness in a diabetic patient suggest hypoglycemia, which is an emergency if blood glucose is low. Offering a carbohydrate snack can quickly raise blood glucose levels and stabilize the patient. Question 7. In preparing a patient for surgery, what is the most important information for the nurse to verify? A. Time of the patient's last meal. B. Patient's understanding of postoperative care. C. Consent form signed and in place. D. Availability of next of kin. Correct answer. 
c. Rationale, ensuring that consent forms are signed and in place is legally required before any surgery. It confirms the patient's permission and understanding of the procedure, risks, and benefits, ensuring ethical and legal compliance. Question 8. Which intervention should a nurse prioritize for a patient experiencing a panic attack? A. Engage the patient in deep breathing exercises. B. Offer reassurances about their environment. C. Administer an anti-anxiety medication, per order. D. Leave the patient alone, to avoid embarrassment. Correct answer. A. Rationale. Engaging the patient in deep breathing exercises can help manage hyperventilation and reduce the intensity of a panic attack. This intervention helps stabilize the patient quickly and can be immediately implemented. Question 9. A patient is admitted with suspected meningitis. What infection control measures should the nurse implement? A. Standard precautions. B. Droplet precautions. C. Contact precautions. D. Airborne precautions. Correct answer. B. Rationale, meningitis can be transmitted through respiratory droplets. Implementing droplet precautions, wearing a mask, eye protection, and a gown, helps prevent the spread of infection. Question 10. The nurse is reviewing a medication list for a patient who is scheduled for surgery. Which medication warrants a conversation about potential discontinuation with the healthcare provider? A. Ibuprofen. B. Acetaminophen. C. Levothyroxine. D. Calcium supplements. Correct answer. A. Rationale Ibuprofen is a nonsteroidal anti inflammatory drug, and said that can increase bleeding risks due to its effect on platelet aggregation. It is essential to discuss potential discontinuation before surgery to prevent excessive bleeding. Question 11. A patient is exhibiting signs of severe anxiety and hyperventilation. What should the nurse instruct the patient to do? A. Take shallow, rapid breaths. B. Hold each breath for 5 seconds. C. Breathe into a paper bag. D. Perform vigorous exercise. Correct answer. C. Rationale. Breathing into a paper bag can help rebalance the oxygen and carbon dioxide levels in the blood, alleviating symptoms of hyperventilation associated with anxiety. Question 12. Which of the following is the most appropriate action for a nurse when dealing with a patient who refuses a prescribed medication? A. Inform the patient of the consequences of noncompliance. B. Administer the medication without the patient's consent. C. Document the patient's refusal in their medical record. D. Dispose of the medication immediately. Correct answer. C. Rationale. Documenting the patient's refusal ensures that there is a record of the patient's decision which is important for legal and clinical reasons. It also prompts further discussion with the healthcare team to address the patient's concerns. Question 13. The nurse observes that a patient's intravenous IV site is swollen, red, and warm to the touch. What is the most likely cause? A. Phlebitis. B. Infiltration. C. Hematoma. D. An allergic reaction to the IV fluid. Correct answer. A. Rationale. These symptoms are indicative of phlebitis, an inflammation of the vein, often caused by irritation from the IV catheter or the infused solution. Question 14. What should a nurse prioritize when caring for a patient with a history of falls? A. Frequent repositioning in bed. B. Application of restraints. C. Use of a walker or other assistive device. D. Continuous IV sedation. Correct answer. C. 
Rationale, providing a walker or other assistive devices is essential for patients with a history of falls to prevent future incidents and ensure safety while promoting mobility and independence. Question 15. A patient with congestive heart failure reports increased shortness of breath. What should the nurse assess first? A. Weight gain over the past few days. B. Urine output. C. Dietary intake. D. Recent physical activity. Correct answer. A. Rationale, weight gain in a short period, typically due to fluid retention, is a critical indicator of exacerbation in congestive heart failure and can explain the increase in shortness of breath. Question 16. A nurse is caring for a patient who is unconscious. What is the priority nursing action to ensure patient safety? A. Maintain a clear airway. B. Check the patient's reflexes. C. Keep the bed in the lowest position. D. Administer stimulants to awaken the patient. Correct answer. A. Rationale. Maintaining a clear airway is essential for an unconscious patient to ensure that the patient can breathe effectively and to prevent aspiration. Question 17. A patient is receiving enteral feedings through a nasogastric tube. What action must the nurse take before administering the feeding? A. Confirm the placement of the tube. B. Chill the formula to enhance absorption. C. Mix the formula with water to decrease viscosity. D. Position the patient in a supine position. Correct answer, A. Rationale, confirming the placement of the nasogastric tube is crucial before administering enteral feedings to prevent pulmonary aspiration if the tube is dislodged or misplaced. Question 18. A nurse is preparing to administer a vaccine. What is the most important action to verify before administration? A. The patient's previous reaction to vaccines. B. The expiration date of the vaccine. C. The patient's insurance coverage. D. The need for a booster dose in the future. Correct answer. B. Rationale. Ensuring the vaccine has not expired is crucial for its efficacy and safety. Administering an expired vaccine can be ineffective and potentially harmful. Question 19. When assessing a patient with peripheral artery disease, PAD, what symptom is most significant? A. Swelling in the lower extremities. B. Hair loss on the lower legs. C. Intermittent claudication. D. Warmth in the affected limbs. Correct answer. C. Rationale, intermittent claudication, characterized by pain and cramping in the legs during exercise due to inadequate blood flow, is a hallmark symptom of PAD and critical for diagnosis and management. Question 20. A patient with bipolar disorder is experiencing a manic episode. What is the most appropriate initial intervention by the nurse? A. Encourage participation in group activities to enhance social interaction. B. Limit stimulation in the patient's environment. C. Provide detailed explanations about the consequences of risky behaviors. D. Increase surveillance to monitor for self-harm. Correct answer. B. Rationale, limiting stimulation is crucial in managing a manic episode as excessive sensory input can exacerbate symptoms such as restlessness, rapid speech, and irritability. This strategy helps to stabilize the patient's mood and prevent overstimulation. Question 21. Which technique is most appropriate for a nurse to use when performing a sterile dressing change? A. Use clean gloves to remove the old dressing, then sterile gloves to apply the new dressing. B. Use the same pair of sterile gloves to remove the old dressing and apply the new one. C. Use sterile gloves throughout the process and apply an antibiotic ointment with a clean technique. D. Remove the dressing without gloves due to the presence of body fluids. Correct answer. A. 
Rationale, using clean gloves to remove the contaminated old dressing and then switching to sterile gloves for applying the new dressing minimizes the risk of infection, adhering to principles of infection control. Question 22. A nurse is caring for a patient who just underwent a total hip replacement. What is the priority nursing intervention to prevent postoperative complications? A. Encourage frequent changes in position. B. Ensure the patient remains on strict bed rest. C. Apply a heating pad to the surgical site. D. Initiate physical therapy on the day of surgery. Correct answer, A. Rationale, encouraging frequent changes in position helps prevent complications such as pressure ulcers, deep vein thrombosis, and pneumonia, which are risks associated with immobility after surgery. Question 23. In preparing a patient for an elective surgical procedure, the nurse notes that the patient's consent form is not signed. What is the next appropriate action? A. Proceed with preoperative preparations as the surgery is elective. B. Notify the surgeon immediately to obtain patient consent. C. Have a family member sign the consent form. D. Sign the consent form on behalf of the patient. Correct answer. B. Rationale, it is essential to notify the surgeon immediately so that they can obtain informed consent from the patient, ensuring that the patient understands the procedure, risks, benefits, and alternatives before proceeding. Question 24. When providing discharge instructions to a patient who had cataract surgery, what information should the nurse emphasize? A. The need to avoid bending at the waist. B. The importance of regular exercise such as jogging. C. Instructions to remove the eye patch daily to check healing. D. The safety of driving immediately after surgery. Correct answer. A. Rationale. After cataract surgery, it's important to avoid activities that increase intraocular pressure, such as bending at the waist, to prevent complications such as bleeding or increased pressure in the eye. Question 25. A nurse is caring for a patient with severe depression who barely speaks. What is the best approach for the nurse to establish communication? A. Speak loudly and clearly to ensure the patient hears the questions. B. Ask open-ended questions to encourage dialogue. C. Frequently ask yes or no questions to simplify interactions. D. Wait for the patient to initiate any conversation. Correct answer, B. Rationale, asking open-ended questions encourages a person with depression to express themselves more fully, facilitating better understanding of their feelings and needs. This approach promotes therapeutic communication and engagement. Visit nursestudy.net for more nursing practice exams, care plans, and study guides.